Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I honor you, Lord, for this blessed and glorious day. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for mercy. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the promise, the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Father, we thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. I declare and I decree, Lord, as we rightly divide your word of truth this very day, Lord, let our eyes of understanding be enlightened. Let our eyes be flooded with so much light. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and I decree that everybody that will be listening to this broadcast, Father, meet them at their point of need. Let them be delivered, O oh God, from ignorance in the name of Jesus. Let their eyes of understanding be enlightened. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I declare and I decree that you will meet them at their point of need. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for grace. We thank you for mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Glory to God. I don't want to take too much of your time, but as you're coming in, just make sure that you let somebody know that we are live. Share the broadcast. Let somebody know that we are live and life is flowing through the airwaves. I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm just going to jump straight into it. Praise God. We are going to get straight into it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We started uh, a series last week called The Correction, whereby we are rightly dividing the word of truth. What we are doing is we are going through the scriptures. There are certain things that we have heard, certain things that we have been taught, certain things that we have been acquainted to for so long, yet there are doctrines of men or certain scriptures that have been misused. So we are rightly dividing the word of truth. So it is the correction because you, in a few minutes, you begin to realize and understand certain things about the purpose and the reason of the scriptures. Praise God. So like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm going to just get straight into it. Praise God. I'm just going to get straight into it. You will catch up. When you join in, you will catch up. You will catch up. Second Timothy, praise God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. Always this broadcast, obviously I'm not expecting everybody to be on this broadcast. It's, it's not a broadcast that, you know, it's, a, it's not a message that you like to hear. For some you have, you know, you like to hear messages, you know, for your itching ears. You know, things like, uh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. That's, so I, I'm not expecting many. Yeah, but those that will come, they are ready to grow. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. The Bible declares and says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why should the word of truth be rightly divided? Why should one study to show themselves approved unto God. And why should they rightly divide? Because the word can be wrongfully divided. The word can be wrongfully divided when people don't stay within the context. Because many people will just take a scripture and run with it without understanding the context. So you have to always, whatever, whenever you're reading the Bible, always Pray that you understand the context and stay within the context. So we ought to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth, because the word can be wrongfully divided. Now look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Praise be to God. The Bible says, All scripture is breath out by God and profitable all scripture all scripture the moment you hear all scripture remember you're talking of Genesis to Malachi so all scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable for teaching that's for doctrine for reproof that's for our evidence for correction that's what we are doing for correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be equipped for every good work, for every good work. So the scriptures, they are given for teaching. The scriptures are given for reproof, our evidence. 
the scriptures are given for correction. So when correction comes, there will be instruction in righteousness. So scriptures must be explained. That's why the correction. Scriptures ought to be explained. That's why the correction. So you have to reset your mind. You have to reset your mind to relearn. Look at Proverbs 23, verse number 7. Proverbs 23, verse number 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse number 7. The Bible says, For he is like, for he is like one who is inwardly calculating and eat and drink, and he says to you, But his heart is not with you. Proverbs. Okay, Proverbs 23, sorry. Proverbs 23, yes. Proverbs 23, for is, is like unto him, yes. Carol dia suja, lembroska, talabas, yeah, which is. Mantola zigia dohon talabas, yeah. Proverbs, it's Proverbs that I want. Praise God, it's Proverbs that I want. Proverbs 23. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you are what you think. The reason why you are where you are today, it is because of your thoughts. The reason why you will be where you will be from today is still because of your thoughts. As a man thinketh, so is he. So you are what you think now. Look at, um, look at Matthew 22. But before we get to Matthew 22, I want you to understand something. If you miss interpret the scriptures your practice or your worship will be wrong if you misinterpret the scriptures your practice or your worship will be wrong matthew 22 verse 29 matthew 22 verse 29 matthew 22 verse 29 matthew 22 verse 29 Oh, thank you, Lord. Mm, Parozagi jala mahanta yabasa. Matthew 22, verse 29. Are you there? 29 to 33. Matthew 22, 39 to... 29 to 33. Praise God. This is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking. But Jesus answered them, You are wrong. That means you a. So there's an... Reason why he's saying you are wrong is because, remember, when you don't understand the scriptures or when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, the scriptures, you will end up in a place called error. So Jesus is saying, you guys, you, you, a, you, a, you are in error. Let's find out why he said that you are in error. He said, and Jesus answered them, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures no, the power of God. So the reason why he had got to that place of saying to them that you are in error, it is because of this. Let's look at pretext. Like I always say, it is always good to look at the pretext. Verse 23, it says, The same day the Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies, no children, having no children, his brother must marry the widow and rise up raise up offspring for his brother now there were seven brothers among us the first married and died and having no offspring left his wife to his brother so too the second and the third down to the seventh after them all the woman died in resurrection therefore of the seven whose wife will she be for they all had her and Jesus said, what? You, 
you and Jesus answered them, you are wrong. You are in error. Why are you in error? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Verse 30, 30 it says, for in the resurrection, for in the resurrection, pay attention, this is Jesus speaking. This is not Moses speaking. This is not Elijah speaking. This is not uh, Joel or Habakkuk speaking or, or Malachi. This is Jesus speaking. He says, for in resurrection, they neither marry nor give in marriage. In resurrection, they neither. Because remember, the Sadducees, they came. They said, listen, we, we, we are accustomed to this custom whereby if the, 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 a man is married and the man dies, the woman can remarry so that they, she will bring up offspring for his, you know, their lineage. Then what then happens? Because this woman got to a place whereby she was married to seven men. So now when we get to on the day of resurrection, who then is going to be the husband of this woman considering she had seven husbands before? Then Jesus says, you guys, you err. You are in error. Why are you in error? Because you know not the scriptures. Pay attention. Like I say, this is Jesus speaking. This is not Paul or John or Timothy or Philemon speaking, but Jesus himself. And he says, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Already that statement tells you that. Angels do not marry. Angels do not marry. This is Jesus speaking. He says they are like angels. That means angels do not have sexual feelings. Angels do not have sex. Okay? Stay with me. They will be like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? So pay attention now. Pay attention. The Bible says you err. That's why you talk about marriage of angels. They are saying, who is going to be the husband of this woman considering she had seven husbands before on the day of resurrection jesus is saying you guys you err you know nothing you are in error because you don't even know the scriptures no the power of god angels do not marry they will be like angels they will be like angels meaning angels do not marry so because of that scripture, Jesus is correcting them because many now have gone to a place of speaking about spiritual husbands. God punish the devil. Spiritual husbands, spiritual wives. So when somebody says spiritual husband, that means that person is married to a spirit spiritual wife that means that person is married to a spirit yet jesus is saying this is not paul speaking not elijah not elisha not moses but jesus himself is saying spirits do not marry question when the where, where are you then finding spiritual husband from doctrines of men they have made the word of God of none effect. Because angels do not have sexual desires. So if angels don't have sexual desires, how then is one married to a spiritual husband or spiritual wife? Yet Jesus said angels do not marry. Angels are spirit beings. They do not marry. Angels don't have sexual desires. Remember the day you moved, watch this, the day you moved from darkness into his marvelous light, the laws that operate in darkness have no hold over you. 
Remember, you are now a spirit being. You are born of the spirit. You are not born of the flesh. So everything concerning you is spiritual because you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So on the day of resurrection, Jesus is saying they will be like angels. Meaning they have no desire for sex. So if angels don't have a desire for sex, when then, where then are you getting spiritual husband and spiritual wife of which you have made that to become a doctrine? Many people are in fear right now. Oh, you have a spiritual husband. You have a spiritual wife. Those are doctrines of men. Why am I saying they're doctrines of men? Because Jesus himself said spirits don't marry. So if you have a spiritual husband, that means you are married to, 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 a, to a spirit. Or spiritual wife, you are married to a spirit. Yet Jesus himself is saying spirits do not marry. So the moment you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light, all the laws... All the laws that operate in darkness have no hold over you. Even if it's a bad dream, pay attention. Even if it's a bad dream, bad dream, it has no hold on you. Why? The kingdom you are in. The kingdom you are in is the kingdom of light, not the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom you are in, bad dreams don't function. Why? Because you are in Christ. Now pay attention. I want you to really pay attention. Spirits do not marry. So question is, where is spiritual husband and where is spiritual wife coming from? Those are doctrines of men. Trying to milk you from your ignorance. You are being milked. You need to sow a seed. Because there is a spirit of husband. There is a spiritual wife that is on you. That comes and Oh my days. Listen, stay there. I'm going to punish the devil. I'm going to punish the devil. Like I said, in this my generation. People that abuse the scriptures. Mm -mm -mm -mm, not anymore. Even when you, okay, watch this. Even if you have a dream having sex in a dream, you are not married. In Matthew 22, Jesus tells them that spirits don't marry. Even if you have a, a dream having sex in a dream, you are not married. Because spirits do not marry. So this doctrine of spiritual husband is to collect money from you. The Bible says, you see, they're, 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 you see the, the Bible says, ye that findeth a wife. So that means you have to find a wife. Ye that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. It did not say ye that findeth a spirit husband. Or ye that findeth a spirit wife. Mm -mm. Ye that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from God. So when you see yourself having sex in your dream, it's not demons. It's not demons. Because demons cannot have sex. Because remember, demons are fallen angels. Demons cannot have sex. <laughs> I know this is too much for you. Because you have been, that's why Paul would talk to, 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 to Timothy and says, From a childhood you have been acquainted to the sacred writings, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. But many are not acquainted to sacred writings. They are acquainted to doctrines of men. So when you see yourself having sex in a dream, it's not demons, because demons, they don't have sex. But it's, watch this now, pay attention. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this. The reason why you, you will have 
the reason why you have you have a dream having sex you have a dream and you're having sex in your dream the reason why pay attention the reason why it is because there is a file in your subconscious that needs to be deleted pay attention it needs to be deleted for a new file to be downloaded the reason why at times you might have a dream and having sex it is because of a file that is in you so that means maybe you would have spent the day watching erotic movies hello and that now file stays in your subconscious so the chances of you replaying that file are high for example um i've been watching boxing watching boxing you know aj and what what and all these guys you know doing their boxing and all that and all that and all that the chances of me having a dream fighting in my dream they are high but because of ignorance a pastor will come or someone will come and i share my dream with them and they interpret the dream and say oh there are spirits that are fighting you there are people that are fighting you oh you need to raise an altar because there are people that are fighting you listen during the day i was watching boxing that file is is in my subconscious so the chances of me having a dream fighting are high you spend the whole day at a rest uh, at a, a party you're cooking cooking it's a party you're cooking 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 you're in the kitchen chances are you will have a dream eating in that dream and when you have a when you dream eating somebody will interpret and say witchcraft they are trying to kill you there's nobody trying to kill you it's a file so jesus is telling them that you err for you know not the scriptures for spirits do not marry that means spirits do not have sexual desires so angels don't have sexual desires and demons are fallen angels so when somebody says you are having sex in your dream it's a spiritual husband it's a spiritual wife that's a lie from the pit of hell it's unbiblical those are doctrines of men reason why you are having sex in your dream it is because of your subconscious there is a file you have been watching too many nonsense movies so that file now is 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 locked in so what you need is to re, re, delete that file and download a new file you watch erotic movies you watch erotic films so when you sleep those films they start playing back in your subconscious my goodness someone says oh, but what, what happens you you know you you're in a dream and then you wake up and then you find yourself all this and all that watch this i'll give another example i spend the day watching boxing again i'm fighting but in my dream i, I have a dream now fighting chances are in my dream i might be throwing punches and I might end up throwing a punch and hitting my wife. God forbid. I think my wife that day she will be dreaming and she will have a shield. She will be like shielding. <laughs> so the chances are there is going to be movement. So I might end up punching my, my, my wife in the dream. But my wife, she's not in my dream. She's right beside me. But because of the movement. So that's the same thing when you have a dream having sex in the dream it is not a it's not a demon no 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 it's not it's not an angel it's not a spiritual husband it's not a spiritual wife it's a file that is in you that needs to be deleted because the files 
the things that you spend your time watching or doing, they will replay. They will replay. I remember one time I was, I watched uh, the first time I watched Anna, is it Anaconda? Hi. God punished the devil. <laughs> I watched Anaconda. And um, I remember I woke up in, in the middle of the night, you know, to just you know, going to, to the gents. I've got a tie rack. Yeah, I've got a tie rack. My wife made a tie rack for me and it's got, it's got my ties and everything. I saw one of my ties there. I almost ran out of my own house thinking the, the anaconda is here. What is happening? There is a file of anaconda in my head. So that is replaying now. This was not now in a dream, but now I'm beginning to see it even if I'm... So you have to understand these things. So these are doctrines of men coming up said you have a spiritual husband. You cannot be married to a spirit. It's not biblical. Jesus said it that spirits, angels do not marry. Now look at Romans chapter 12 verse 2. God punished the devil. <laughs> Romans chapter 2. Romans 12 rather. Romans 12 verse number 2. Romans 12 verse number 2. Mm. Zoliga baroho tayama andalabasia. Kem bradaskia. Watch this. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your... Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Do not be conformed to the systems of this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's a mind, it's a mind, it's a mind, it's, it's a mind thing. It's not a, it's, a not, it's, not, it's not a prayer thing. It's a mind thing, not prayer thing. Okay, watch this. Why am I saying it's a mind thing? Now watch this, stay there. You go to your pastor, your whatever, and you tell them that, yeah, I've got this spiritual husband. Already you have, you have told yourself you have a spiritual husband. You have already told yourself. I, I sleep with, with, there's a man that comes and sleeps with me in my dream. I have a spiritual husband. You already say you have a, remember, Proverbs, as a man thinketh, so is he. Okay? You are what you think. So if you tell yourself you have a spiritual husband, the enemy will ma manipulate you in your ignorance. Yet it's a file that needs to be deleted because Jesus told you that angels do not marry. So if angels do not marry, where is spiritual husband coming from? It's a mind thing. So watch this. You go to your pastor and say, I've got a spiritual husband. Obvious, you have told yourself you have a spiritual husband. I have a spiritual wife. You go to your pastor and tell him, oh, I have a spiritual wife. And pastor said, no, pray, no let's pray. Father, in the day, yeah, 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 I cast out every spiritual husband. I cast out every spiritual husband, every spiritual wife, every blah, 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 every blah, 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 every blah, blah, blah. And guess what? The very same night, you still have spiritual husband, so-called, coming and sleeping with you. It's not a prayer thing. It's, 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 it's a mind thing. That's why Jesus is saying, let this your mind be transformed by renewing, by renewal. So why do I need my mind renewed? Because the reason why I am seeing myself sleeping and having sex in the dream, it is because there is a file in my head that begins to replay the movies I've been watching. So it begins to replay. Like I said, you spend the whole day at a party cooking. What are the chances of you having a dream eating because of that file? And you are told it's witchcraft. They are feeding you with. <laughs> so your mind has to be renewed. How is your mind renewed? It requires teaching, not prayer. Some of these things that you are praying for, they don't require prayer. They require teaching. Your mind has to be renewed. 
the files they need to be deleted and you download new files look at ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 ephesians 5 ephesians 5 verse 26 praise god ephesians 5 verse 26 that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by what by the washing of water with the word so the cleansing of your mind comes through the washing of water by the word so it is the word of god that will wash out those files these are files these are files you cannot have a spiritual husband you cannot have a spiritual wife it's not biblical because jesus said it it was not moses that said it it was not elijah that said it It was not John either that said it, but Jesus himself. Because the Sadducees were thinking that, in Matthew 22, they were thinking that this woman, okay, she has slept with, she has been with seven husbands. So on the day of resurrection, who then is going to be the, the husband? Considering she has had seven. And Jesus said, you err, for you know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. You are in error. On the day of resurrection, we shall be like angels. Meaning, angels do not have sexual desires. So if angels don't have sexual desires, why is it then you have a spiritual husband? Because that's a, demons are fallen angels. You keep praying, but you keep having the same dreams. It's not a prayer thing. It's a mind thing. It's a mind thing that needs to be renewed. And the renewing needs a washing of water by the word. You need, you need to... Some, some, you know, I think I need to hire the fire brigade. You know, that horse that, that they have. Some people, we just need to bring your brains here, open them, and just ask the fire brigade to just blow your brains. <laughs> Doctrines of men. You have noticed that many people will be prayed for, but they're still having sex in their dreams. Why? Their minds have not been renewed. So the greatest gift God gave us is the teaching preacher. Look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to show you something. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter number 4. Praise God. Chapter 4 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 uh, to 12. And he gave the apostles. He gave the Rodericks, the apostles. It's good to see everybody here. Apostle Roderick, Elaine, Daisy, Prophetess, uh, Florence, everybody here. Praise God. God bless you. And he gave the apostles. He gave the apostles. He gave the apostles. He gave the prophets. He gave the evangelists and the shepherds and teachers. Now you begin to see the role of these guys now. I want to expose something. I want you to see the role of the prophets, the role of the evangelists, the role of the shepherds, the role of the teachers to equip to equip the saints for the work of ministry. To equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature to manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the role of the prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists is to equip. What is to equip? To teach. So we teach you to be who Christ ordained you to be. We teach you to manifest your new identity. We teach you to operate in, your, in, in the spiritual realm. Because you are a spirit. So the role of a pastor is to teach you, to equip you for the work of ministry. So we come here, we equip you. We tell you that, listen, this is your now your identity in Christ Jesus. So when we equip you, you go out there, you exercise that which we, you have been equipped with. And when that happens, you then go and equip others. You then go and equip others. Watch this. The perfecting, the equipping of the saints. 
How? Through teaching. So many of you that think that angels marry you then go for deliverance you then go for the so-called deliverance but now watch this pay attention let me whip the devil for two minutes allow me so the problem is many people they think watch this many people they think that there were angels that married the daughters of men in genesis that's where you get this your mindset of spirit mary pay attention like i said always when you're reading the scriptures always stay in the context always say stay in the context the reason why they say, oh yeah, Spirit Mary, in Genesis, did you not see that the angels, the, the, the angels came and met with the daughters of men? Yet here some men of God that seem to be highly educated and they are not able to rightly divide the word of truth. Not because they are not educated, but they, they are not able to rightly divide because they are not staying in context. Genesis, the whip is out. Now, watch this. They think the daughters of men, hey, they were married by the sons of God, angels. <laughs> Stay there. Genesis chapter number six, verse number one. Genesis six, verse one. When, when men, watch this, when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, to them, who them, context, men. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose. Stay in context. The sons of God are who? Stay in context, men. They saw that the daughters of Men were attractive. Sons of God. Stay in context. When, because the Bible says when men began to multiply. So stay in context. And they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in men forever. For he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. Remember, my spirit shall not abide in men because he is flesh. His years shall be 120. But now that... Because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection, now that we are spirit beings, that's why now we have eternity. The flesh has got no eternity, but the spirit is eternal. Watch this. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not, uh, shall not, buy, uh, uh, shall not abide in man forever, for his flesh, his days, shall be 120 years. Verse number four. The Nephilim. Some people, when you see that word Nephilim, my God, you start shaking. Nephilim, because it sounds like it's an angel. <laughs> Nephilims, the Nephilims. When you hear the Nephilims, my God, some people are like, whoa, angels. Nephilims means giants. Giants. Nephilims, it means giants. It's not angels. <laughs> The Bible says, the Nephilims were on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Sons of God, stay in context. It's still talking about men. Watch this. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. And they bore children to them. These were the mighty men. It did not say mighty men angels. Stay in context. These were mighty men who were of old, the men of, watch this, the men of, not the angels of, of renown. So watch this. Pay attention. All right. The Bible says, when men began to multiply, stay in context. It's talking about men. Sons of God in context are men. The Bible is the book, is a book of context. 
Don't read out of context. That's why you end up misinterpreting scriptures. Because you read out of context. The men that are being spoken of stay in context. The sons of men, the sons of God, context is men. So don't read your thoughts in the Bible. Don't read your thoughts in the, in the Bible. Remember, men cannot multiply without daughters. Nephilims are giants, not angels. Sons of God. Okay. Why I always emphasize on you staying in context. Okay, let me give an example. You have, uh, let me give somebody who is here. You have Apostle Roderick here. Apostle Roderick is a son of God. Is he an angel? Hello? You call your pastor man of God. Is he an angel? So when we say the, the son of God married the daughter of God, Angel Preston, and they bore children. Are we saying the angels slept with a prophetess angel? The son of God, stay in context, is a man. Apostle Roderick is a son of God. Daisy, a daughter of men, but still a daughter of God. I just want you to understand something. So stay in context. The sons of God is not talking about angels. It's talking about men. Men of God. Sons of God is not talking about angels. It's talking about men. So the Nephilims are giants. These were giants. But be them being giants, they are still men. Stay in context. The giants, these are people like Goliath. Mighty men, not mighty men, angels. And then the Bible says, look at verse number five. I want to show you something. Verse number five. The Lord saw the wickedness of men was great in, was great in the earth and that every intention of these thoughts of his hearts were only evil continually. Verse number six. And the Lord regretted that he had made men on the earth. That word the Lord regretted is not the Lord regretted as in why did that? No, no, no. no. That word regretted, it means the Lord had pity of the decisions that men were taking. It's not like God regretted because he is not man that he would lie. No son of man that would regret, repent. He does not repent. So that word regret there is he felt pity for men, for the decisions that they were making. It repented the Lord. It repented the Lord. There is pity for men. Because of men's choices. And out of the pity. He came. To die for men. Out of that pity. What you are calling regretted. Mm -mm, it's pity. Out of the pity. What did God do? He came and he died for men. Why? Look at Numbers 23. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse number 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. Praise God. Mr. Mark Magore, it is good to see you, sir. It's been a while. God is not man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. So he does not repent. He does not. That repent there is he felt pity. He felt pity. God does not react. God pro-acts. Because if he reacts, that means something caught him unaware. Yet he's the all-seeing God. So he does not react. God pro-acts. So when you know what God has, has done in Christ, you will never be a cripple. You will stop running around looking, looking for external sources. When you know what you have, when you know your identity in Christ and you know what Christ has done, you will stop running around looking for external sources. 
like salts. You're looking, running around, looking for salts, looking for oils, looking for waters, or looking for mediums to see in the spirit. Or you're looking for mediums to hear the voice of God. You don't need mediums to hear the voice of God. Look at John. John chapter 10. John 10, 27. John 10, 27 to 28. John 10. God punished the devil. John 10, 27 to 28. Watch this. Are you here? Watch this. The Bible says in John 10, 27 to 28. So you don't need mediums to hear the voice of God. Stop running around looking for external sources to hear the voice of God. John, 20, John 10, 27 to 28, the Bible says, My sheep, my sheep, they hear my voice. So if you are not hearing the voice, I don't know whether you are a sheep or you are a goat, or you just need to be taught how to hear the voice. My sheep, they hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I gave, I give them eternal life and they will not perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. No one. My sheep, the sheep of the Lord, no one will snatch them out of his hands. No one. Meaning if you cannot hear the voice, there is something that is wrong somewhere. The ability to hear the voice of God is in your nature. The ability to hear the voice of God is in your nature. It is in your DNA. My sheep, they hear my voice. And the voice of the stranger, they will not hear. So now the question that I have is, how come you, 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 you hear the voice of an outsider and not the voice of God who resides in your inside? You hear the voice of an outsider, outsider, yet you don't hear the voice of God that resides in your inside. There is an error because the Bible says, my sheep, they hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not. So why is it you are always looking for mediums to hear the voice of God? Why is it you, you, you can hear the voice of an outsider, but you cannot hear the voice of God that resides in your inside? So you go as far as I don't know where you go to hear what God is saying. So you are trusting that man to tell you what God is saying. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I go to a man for that man to tell me what God is saying about my life. So that man is going to ask God who is in me. So I carry God to a man and say, please, Tell me, what is God saying about me? That man will inquire from the God that is in you. You see where the error is? Am I saying that um, don't inquire from... No, no, no. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, you too have that ability. You have that ability. But at times you might not know everything. So you might end up having a man that will that will speak into your life so i'm not don't don't come here and start saying oh he's saying you are don't 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 go to don't let prophets no 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 that's the problem don't read your thoughts mm -mm. stay in context <laughs> so i can still have a man that can speak into my life and say hey man of god this is what god is saying and this and this and that guess what because he's saying God is saying, and that same God resides in my inside. That same God will confirm what he's saying. Because he's in me. So when, for example, say, uh, let me use an example here. So let's say a uh, prophetess angel will come and say, man of God, I'm seeing... Um, there's, 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 there's a project that you're doing and God is, 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 is giving you this project and all that and all that. When she says that, because the same God she's inquiring from resides in my inside. So when she says that, the God in me 
will attest and say, oh, no, no, she's telling the truth. She's telling, yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Because she will prophesy what God will have shown me. But what might have happened is I did not pay much attention to it. So she will come and remind me of what God has already spoken to me about. That's why when we prophesy, we prophesy about things that you know, say, ah, but you know what? Yeah, but it's, it's true because I was feeling it like this, like this. So God is just confirming. He's just confirming. So me going to, 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 to Prophet Roderick and he speaks over me, or it does not mean that uh, I don't have God in me. But my point is, you are able, you have the ability yourself to hear the voice of God. So when a prophet speaks to you, if it's true, if it's of God, if it's not familiar spirit, 99% your spirit will confirm, will attest, will bear witness to what they are saying. So the problem is you are failing to hear the voice that is in your inside, but you are hearing the voice of an outsider. There is an error. There is a problem. So you, can, so you can grow, watch this, you can grow in the realities of Christ and your discernment gets, it becomes sharp rather. So we teach you, we teach you your realities in Christ and when you, when, when you understand your realities in Christ, you begin to grow spiritually as you grow spiritually your discernment becomes sharp look at second peter look at second peter second peter chapter three second peter chapter number three second peter are you here second peter chapter three verse number 18 <clears throat> so you don't okay let, let, b before i read this let me just punish another devil let me just punish the devil for two minutes you don't sow a seed for grace you don't sow a seed for grace let me tell you this and let me say it again you do not you do not sow a seed for grace so oh, there's grace upon this man i need to sow a seed to tap into that grace uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. pay attention Don't, don't be acquainted to doctrines of men. Those are messages just trying to milk money from you. Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 18 says what? But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, but now to the day of eternity. So what happens? You grow in grace. Okay, let me let me bring it home. For example, again, there is the prophetic in you. For you to grow in the prophetic, you don't go and sow a seed and tap into a man's grace because a man has got no grace to give you. What you do is you grow in the grace, in that grace, in that area, you grow. So the man you want to go to and say, I want the grace that is upon this man, that man had to grow in that grace. The Bible says you grow in grace. You grow. You grow. How do you grow? Through the word. Through teaching. You grow in grace. You grow in grace. My goodness. You grow in grace. I came across um, a clip on, uh, um, yeah, on social media. There was a man that was saying, oh yeah, this season, you know, people are fighting the prophetic. They are fighting prophets. They are fighting prophets. They are fighting prophets. Yeah, because the prophetic is the end time ministry. I'm listening to this guy. The prophetic is the end time ministry. Yes, this and that and that and that. I have no problem with that. You can say the prophetic is the end time ministry and all that and, and all that. I'm not going to ask you to give us scripture reference to that. I'm not going to for now. So I'm listening to this guy. 
Oh yeah, they're fighting the prophetic because the prophetic is it's, it's needed right now in this in the body of Christ because you know this is the the, 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 the end times. God has to speak through the prof, the prophetic the prophetic office so that we understand. I said I have no problem with you, sir. But I have a question. These are the end times, hundred percent, no doubt. So how is it if you are saying that the prophetic is the one that God is going to use? How is it I have not heard? I don't know, maybe you have heard from some people, from others. I personally, I have not heard prophecies about the move of God in these perilous times. The move of God, what God is, is saying in these last days. I've not heard a prophecy. I don't know, maybe you have heard. I've not heard a prophecy in, in line with that. The only prophecies I hear is your phone number is 2222. You have three tomatoes in your fridge. You have, uh, you have uh, your, your name is Peter. Uh, you're wearing uh, white socks. Uh, you have, uh, so I am, I, I am a bit concerned. If you are telling me that the prophetic is the one that God will use in the end times, but I've not heard any prophecy in regards to the plan of God concerning these last days it's all uh, i see you have 5 pounds in your 5 dollars in your account i i, I see my god ooh, woo, re, ke, 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 ke. i see three tomatoes in your fridge ooh. what happened to prophesying about the move of god in these perilous times it's all about your phone number. And you tell me, you come here and you tell me the prophetic has been fought because it's the end time prophecy, end time ministry. My friend, stay there. I want to punish the devil so that when you watch this now, you understand. Listen, don't just come here and just speak anyhow because there are people that will rightly divide the word of truth. Watch this now. Pay attention. Now God punish. Now I'm bound to punish the devil. End time minister, the prophetic, the end time minister. And all that I'm hearing is your number is 222. Your name is Peter. You are married to Susan. And you have a what what? And uh, your passport number starts with F F F D D D D what what? Nothing to do with the move of God. What is God saying in these last days? There are so many things that are happening. Rumors of cloning here and there, rumors of this and all this and all this, and they are trying to, you, you know, push their agenda of the, the, the world order, what, what, and all, all those things that will affect believers. You are not prophesying about that. All you can see is football is out. Your name is Peter. Your phone number is. <laughs> and you come here and tell me that the prophetic is, is, is the end time ministry to do what to tell me that my phone number don't you think i know my own phone number if i want my phone number i'll just go to vodacom and say listen what's my number so many have aborted the things of the spirit why because they want to feel they want to see they want to touch john 20 i'm about to punish the devil John 20, 29. God punished the devil. John 20, 29. <clears throat> John 20, 29. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So many of you, you want to believe when you touch. That's why you end up thinking like, if, 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 if a man of God prays for me, he has to add something to it. I, I, have, to, I have to have a mantle. Give me a mantle. Or give me some oil. Give me some water. You want to touch, you want to see. My goodness, look at Colossians chapter 2. I want to punish the devil. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in him, in where? In him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled, you have been filled in him. Who is the head and rule of all authority? Where are you? In him, the fullness of God is in your inside. 
The fullness of God is not in a bottle. The fullness of God is not in water. The fullness of God is not in bread or wine or ribena. The fullness of God is in him and he is in you. So the fullness of God is where? It's in your inside. My goodness. Look at the pretext. I like pretext. Verse number 8. Watch it. See it that no one takes you captive. No one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human traditions. To the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. It is fulfilled. It is a fulfilled law. It is fulfilled. So, if a fulfilled law is still being taught, is a doctrine of men. Look at verse 9. Stay there. For in him, in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled. I'm speaking to people that have been filled. You have been filled in him. So stop looking for external sources. You have been filled in him. All dwells in Christ. Not in the bread, not in water, not in oils. Mm -mm -mm. The fullness of God is in a person, not in a ritual. The fullness of God is in a person, not in a ritual. And you have been filled in him. You have been filled. What have you been filled with? The fullness of God. You have been filled in him. The fullness of God. The fullness of God is in your inside, my beloved. The fullness of God is in, a, in your inside. The fullness of God is not in oils, is not in water, is not in bread or whatever that you are eating or whatever. No, it is in a person and that person is in your inside. If you understand this, you will begin to walk with authority, knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. My goodness. So you are complete. Because Christ fulfilled the demands. You are complete. I'm speaking to people that are complete. Stop looking for outside sources. Stop looking for mediums. Stop looking for waters and salts and all this nonsense. You are complete in him. What is in Christ is in a believer. Remember you are his workmanship created in Christ. For good works everything that is in christ is in you what cannot be found in christ cannot be found in you so when i look at emmanuel i am seeing the fullness of god in a being because god is in you so you are complete in christ he fulfilled all the demands so the New Testament is not a testament of shadows, is not a testament of types, is not a testament of handkerchiefs, is not a testament of mantles, is not a, is the, the oil, it's not a testament of the oil as the anointing, it's not a testament of water baptism as symbolic of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But it's a testament of reality. Our anointing is a person. Our mantle is a person. Our bread is a person. He lives in, in inside of us. The New Testament is a testament of the Spirit because you are born of the Spirit, not born of the flesh. So the New Testament is a testament of the Spirit. It's not a testament of shadows. It's not a testament of mantles. It's not a testament of oils, but it's a testament of the Spirit. Everything that you ever need in this life has been fulfilled and you have been filled with it in you because you are in Christ. Our bread is a person, Jesus Christ. Our anointing is a person, Jesus Christ. Our mantle is a person, Jesus Christ. Away with elementary things. Away with shadows. Away with types. 
So the ability for you to function in the realm of the spirit and see and prophesy is with you. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I'm about to close. Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. But this was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. I they gave all shutter. In the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters. I don't know who I'm speaking to. If Are you a son? Are you a daughter? What did the Bible say? It said, you shall prophesy. You will prophesy not because of anything else, but because of his spirit that is in you. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. You shall prophesy. The ability for you to prophesy is in your inside. You shall prophesy. You are sons and daughters. What are you supposed to do? You will prophesy. Watch this. Watch this. I'm about to say something that might not sit with you. But you that are here, it will sit well with you. God took away, God took away the prophetic and redistributed it to all believers. The, the prophetic was given to the prophets in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, God took that prophetic mandate from the, prof, from the prophets and he distributed it to all believers. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. In the last days, I do what? I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. So the prophetic was taken away and has been redistributed to all believers. So the prophetic is not exclusive. It's not all believers. But the reason why others would seem to prophesy and others seem not to is because they are they have grown in that grace. And we still we need we need that. I'm not saying we don't. We need that. I believe in the prophetic 100%. I believe in it. And we still need people that will prophesy to others. We need that. But I want you to understand that you too, you have that ability to prophesy. Because the prophetic was taken away. Hebrews, or somebody said, oh, what do you mean he, the prophetic was taken away? Ah, I know, somebody is asking, okay? Ask no more. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2 will answer you. Long ago, at times, and in many ways, divers manners, God spoke to our fathers. God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in the last days, well, these are the last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed a of all things. Through him also he created the world. So in the last days, who has spoken? God has spoken, not God will speak. He has spoken by his son. Question, where is the son in your inside? So the ability to hear the voice of the Father is in you. The ability to prophesy is in you because God has spoken. Because in sundry times, he spoke by the prophets. He spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken, not he will speak. He has spoken to us by his son. Where is the son? In your inside. In your inside. Now all this drama of... I hear my papa started in a what, what, and I have to know. All this, I, 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 all this idea of, no, 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 no. I have to hear from my papa first. I will not do anything because I should hear from my papa. Because by a prophet, they were delivered. By a prophet, they were preserved. Let me punish the devil. Let me punish the devil now. Get ready. Exodus chapter 19. 
This is where all this drama of uh, my papa, my Moses, started from. Exodus chapter 19. God punished the devil. The plan of God, the plan of God was to speak to, to all of us. God spoke to Moses and said, listen, go tell the children of Israel to come up here. I need to speak with them. The children of Israel said, hey, 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 hey. we have seen the manifestation. Hey, 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 hey. We are not going. Moses, you go. Speak to God. When you speak to God, whatever God says, you come back and tell us. We are not going there. But the plan of God was to speak to all of us. And that plan has been reinstated in Joel chapter 228. In the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters. And again in Hebrews, in Sunday times, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Where is the son? In your inside. So that now has been fulfilled. My sheep, they hear my voice. My sheep, we hear the voice. So, what happened in Exodus? The children of Israel refused to go to the mountain to hear what God was saying. They said, N -uh. Moses, you go and speak to God. When you speak to God, come then now tell us what God is saying. Moses went, spoke to God, and you come and said, this is what God is saying. So people have taken that now in the New Testament, which was of the Old Testament. That's why people said, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to marry until I hear my papa. I'm not going to do this until I hear my papa. You want to, you are waiting for papa. To, you want waiting for, you are waiting to hear from papa. Papa hears from God, right? And where is God? In your inside. So why don't you just hear God yourself? Hello? <laughs> the scripture that they love. Amos. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. My God, they love this scripture. Amos chapter 3 verse number 7. Amos chapter 3 verse number 7. This is the scripture that they love. This is the scripture that they love. I'm going to punish the devil with this scripture. I'm going to, oh, I'm, I'm whoa, get ready. Amos chapter 3 verse number 7. This is the scripture that they love. For God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. My goodness gracious. For God will surely do nothing unless he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So I need a prophet. God will not do anything in your life, a rose, until he reveals it to these servants, the prophet. That's a lie from the pit of hell. What do you mean? Is it not written? It is written. Let's stay in context. For surely God will not do anything unless he reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. What is it that God will not do until he revealed it to his servants, the prophets? The, the revelation of, okay, rather, to reveal, to reveal the plan for redemption. That scripture is not talking about your now prophet. That God will not do anything unless he reveals his secrets unto his servants. What was being revealed? God punished the devil. La rigabanta zoja. The prophets had an assignment to reveal the plans of God for redemption. Many people are deceived. That scripture is not talking about your now prophets. That surely God will not do anything unless he reveals it unto himself. It's not talking about your papas. It's not talking about your prophets. It's talking about the Old Testament prophets. They had to reveal the plan of God for redemption. Not now. God will not do anything unless he reveals to his servants, the prophets. Ah, 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 ah. Look at Luke. Luke chapter 24. Luke 24, 25. What was it that the prophets were to, had to reveal? What was it that God had to reveal to his servants, the prophets, before he did anything? What was it? Let's see. Luke 24, 25. Luke 24, 25. God punished the devil. He said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So what was it that the prophets were meant to say? 
Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? So God will surely do nothing unless he reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. What was to be revealed was the plan of redemption. Oh, okay. Okay. Was it, necess was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things? That was what was revealed to the prophets. That's why they were prophesying about redemption. They prophesied. That's why the Bible in Hebrew says, In sundry times God spoke to our fathers by the prophets in diverse manners. God was, was telling them about the plan of redemption, salvation. He used Noah. The ark was symbolic. So those were the secrets that were revealed to his servants, the prophets. Deuteronomy 18, God punished the devil. Deuteronomy 18, verse 5. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, sorry. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. The Lord your God, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like from me among you, from your brothers. It is him you should, you should listen to. The prophet that has been spoken there is not your prophet. The prophet that has been spoken of by Moses, he said, there is one that is coming. It's not me. That prophet, you need to listen to him. That prophet is not your prophet. That prophet is Jesus Christ. That's the prophet that is saying, you should listen to him and you will be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, that's the prophet that has been spoken of by Moses. It's not your prophet. Watch this. Luke 9. God punished the devil. I'm about to close. That's why I'm now pushing this thing. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, 35. Luke chapter 9, verse 35. Luke 9, 35. Luke 9, 35. Parasigidungi biarano sigia do hunter. And behold, a spirit seizes him and he suddenly cries. Uh, verse 35. Verse 35. Luke 9, 35. God punished the devil. Watch this. Oh, God punished the devil. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Remember, this was on the day of transfiguration when Elijah appeared, Moses appeared, and Elijah and Moses realized that, eh, eh, we are not the prophet that was being spoken of. Let's just disappear here. And the voice came said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. My chosen one. Hear ye him. That is the prophet that was being spoken. That is the prophet that was being spoken. Surely by a prophet they were delivered. That's the prophet that has been spoken of. It's not your papa that has been spoken of. By a prophet they were delivered. By a prophet they were preserved. It's the, that prophet is Jesus Christ. That has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous life. By a prophet they were preserved. It is Jesus that preserves us. Why? Because our lives are hid in Christ. We are preserved. It is not your prophet. By a prophet, they were delivered. By a prophet, they were preserved. He's not talking about your papa. He's talking about Jesus' deliverance from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. By a prophet, they were preserved. Who has preserved us? Jesus. The Bible says, those that you have gave me, Oboshatayaman, no one will snatch them out of my hand. We have been preserved. God punished the devil. He's not talking about your papa. Oh, I, I really wanted to, to finish this now, but I have to say this first. Now, I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention. Please, 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 please. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. There are three entities. Oh, Karozi, Yamahanta, Yabasia. There are three personalities, rather. There are three personalities you need to know. There are three personalities that you need to know. Why? For when anything happens, it's either it is God. It's either it is angels, it's either it is men, or Satan by identification. So when anything happens on earth, it's, it's one of these personalities. 
Are you here? If anything happens on earth, it is one of these personalities. So for you to know which of them, you must know who they are. These three personalities. It is very, very important. So your knowledge of these three personalities will affect you how you do things. The knowledge of these three personalities, you ought to know them. Why? Oh God, I really wanted to finish, but I think I'll just... Let me, let me push this thing. Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. Why I'm saying that you need to understand these three personalities. For when anything happens, it's either it's God, angels, men, or Satan by identification. So you have to know these three personalities. For you to know what is happening now, you will know which personality it is. Job chapter 3 verse 25. <clears throat> Job chapter 3 verse 25. Watch this. The Bible says, For the thing, watch this, For the thing that I feared comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. The things that I feared, the things that I feared. So Job's expectation, Job's expectation was fear. His expectation was fear. The thing that I feared has come upon me. So his expectation was fear. Look at verse 26 of the same chapter. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but trouble comes. I am not at ease. I am not quiet. I am not at rest, but trouble comes. For fear connects you to your expectations. Remember, fear is perverted faith. So you fear generational curses. Fear that which I feared, that which I feared has come upon me. You fear spiritual husbands, spiritual wives. What, that which I feared has come up because fear is a connector to your expectations. That which I feared. So fear was Job's expectation. So the person, the reason you are afraid is because you think that things will happen. You think that these things will happen. So fear is a connector to what you fear. Okay. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Second Timothy chapter. For God has gave us, for God gave us a spirit not to fear, but the power and love and self-control. So fear comes from what you hear. So does faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So fear cometh by hearing again. Fear comes by hearing. What you hear. You know, there are prophets of doom. They'll be prophesying death. Oh, I see death in your family. I see someone is going to die. I see this. What, what is happening there is by hearing, by hearing, fear cometh. And fear is a connector. So Job's expectations, fear, Job's expectation was fear. That which I feared has come upon me. Stay with me. I know where I'm going with this. That which I feared has come upon me. So Job did everything. Trying to prevent his fear. Look at Job chapter 1 verse 6. Job chapter 1 verse 6. 
Job chapter 1 verse 6. You're going to see something and you're going to thank yourself for listening. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Watch this. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord again. Sons of God again. They came. When the day they came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Stay with me. I want to show you something. Okay, let me read that scripture and then I show you something. The Lord and Satan also came together, came among them. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant job? Have you considered my servant job? Now, I want to show you something. Are you ready for this? This, this is going to be heavy for you. This is heavy. Whenever you see the word Lord in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, whenever you see the word Lord in the Old Testament, you need to find out who is the Lord. My God. Because people have this mindset that God and Satan had a conversation about Job. God had a conversation with Satan about Job. That's what you've been taught. I know you've been taught this. Listen, stay there and open up to relearning. Whenever you see the word Lord in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, you need to find out who is the Lord. The word Lord was used in the Old Testament. It was used for God. It was used for judges. It was used for deity. It was even used for people in the courtyard. Right now, if I go to court and the Lord gives me a slap, when I come and tell you guys, I'll say, hey, the Lord slapped me. The first thing that comes in your mind is the Lord. You think it's God that slapped me. Yet the Lord is referring to the judge. We call judges here. I don't know about where you are. We call judge your Lord. Lordship. Lord Mayor. Lord whatever. Lord Sugar. You know, we've got Lord Sugar. This guy who is an entrepreneur. and all. He calls, he's, he's called Lord Sugar. Lord Beckham. Lord what what. So Lord does not mean God. Because in the Old Testament, Lord was used for deity. It was used for God. It was used for judges. It was even used for men. Okay. First Peter, quickly. Go to First Peter and then we come back to this Lord. First Peter, I want you to see where the Lord was used again. First Peter chapter 3 verse 6. First Peter chapter 3 verse number 6. Watch this. As Sarah obeyed Abraham... Calling him Lord. So Abraham was called Lord by Sarah. So whenever you see the Bible saying, and the Lord in the Old Testament, you need to understand which Lord. Because God is referred as Lord. Deity is referred as Lord. Judges are referred as Lord. Even people. Abraham was called Lord by Sarah. So when the Bible says, and the Lord was, came together with Satan, it's not talking about God. How do I mean it's not talking about God? Let me explain in a few minutes and then I close. I'll just explain this and then I close. So when you see the word Lord, read the context to see who it was referring to. So the only definition of God is in Christ. What Christ does not do, God does not do. Now look at Job chapter 1 verse number 5. Job chapter 1 verse 5. Uh, I'm about to close so I'm just going to round up. John, Job chapter 1 verse number 5. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job sent and consecrated them and would raise up in the morning and offer offerings according to the number of all of them. Remember the children, he was not even aware. He was thinking, oh, maybe my children have sinned. Maybe this have done this. Maybe this, oh, maybe they've, they've offended God. So he started raising offerings. He made sacrifices. But watch this. Job's fears made him to give offerings to his fear instead of giving offering to God but the offerings were to his fear many of you 
because of certain things that have been spoken over your life, fear has crippled you. So you start giving to your fear instead of giving to God. So he started giving. Why? Because if Job had understood the personalities, you remember I spoke about the three personalities. If Job had understood the three personalities, he would have understood that it was Satan. And if he had knew it was Satan, he would have rebuked Satan. For the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Now, going back to the Lord. So it was never God. It was never God that had a conversation with Satan. Why? Because light and darkness cannot mix. And Satan, remember, a fallen angel. And the Bible tells me that nobody had seen God at any time. Even angels. So when did God and angel and Satan come together and had a meeting about Job? You see what you have been taught for over years? You've been thinking, oh, there was a fight in heaven. God was fighting the Satan and all that. That's nonsense. It's not. In, don't read your thoughts in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Stop reading your thoughts in the Bible. How can Satan and God have a conversation in regards to Job? Yet the Bible says nobody had seen God at any time. Not, not even angels. So if, if Job had knew the three personalities, that personality of Satan, you would have rebuked him. And if you rebuke the, the devil, the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. So many people will say, Job, with what Job was going through, people have preached this. Hello? People have preached this, that uh, the story of Job, you know, you know, God is teaching you a lesson. Job, God was teaching Job a lesson. How can a good God teach his children a lesson using the, the weapons of the devil? You being as evil as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. What more of me, your heavenly father? So why would God use the, 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 the weapons of the enemy to teach his children a lesson? So many people, you are going through certain things and you are thinking that God is teaching you a lesson. Reason why you are thinking like that is because you don't know the three personalities. And Satan by identification, you don't. Whenever anything happens, these three personalities, you need to know them. It's either it's God, either it's angels, either it's man or the devil by identification so that's why people come up with oh god is teaching you a lesson don't worry my brother stay in there be strong god is teaching you a lesson god is taking you through the wilderness how can god teach you a lesson through, to take you to the wilderness a wilderness is a place of of dryness a place of no hope a place of why would god take you and teach you a lesson Yet the Bible says, the goodness of the Lord tends people to repentance. Not teaching them a lesson using the devil's tactics. You see the things you've been learning, you need to relearn these things. There was never a conversation with God and Satan. God had never... Oh, oh, okay, watch this. So when God had never had a conversation, never, 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 never had a conversation with Satan, never. The moment you see the word Lord, understand the context. Like I said, Lord refers to judges. It refers to, to, to deity. It refers to God. It refers to men. We saw that in First Peter. Sarah called Abraham my Lord. Judges were called Lord. So you need to know which Lord. It cannot be Lord our God because Bible says nobody had seen God at any time. Not even angels. Watch this. Let me close with this now. So there was never a conversation between God and, and Satan. Stop lying to yourselves. Don't read your thoughts in the Bible. It's not there. Stay in the context. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Praise God. First Timothy Chapter 3, verse number 16. Watch this. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels. They had not seen him, but he was seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world. 
So the knowledge of these three personalities will show you will show you where sickness comes from. Many of you, you're going through a season of sickness and you're saying God is teaching you a lesson. God can never teach you a lesson using the tactics of the devil. When you know these three personalities, you know that sickness comes from the devil. That's why Jesus was anointed and he went about doing good, healing all kinds of sicknesses. God never uses sickness to teach you a lesson. But what does he do? He heals. He what? He heals. So spiritual husbands, I'm concluding now as I finish. Spiritual husbands, those are doctrines of men. Because Jesus in Matthew 22, he said, spirits do not marry. You can never have a spiritual husband or a spiritual wife because spirits do not marry. The ability to prophesy is within you. By a prophet, they were delivered. He's not talking about your prophet, but it's talking about Jesus, the prophet that has brought deliverance from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous life. Moses, when he delivered the children, it was a symbolic. It was symbolic of what Christ would do. Surely God will do nothing but unless he reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. He was not talking about your prophets, your papas. He was talking about the Old Testament prophets. They had to reveal the plan of redemption. God's plan for redemption. That was what they were prophesying. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory. Beginning at Moses, he began to expound to them the things concerning himself. So my beloved... You need to understand these three personalities. God, angels, men, and Satan by identification. When you understand these three entity personalities, whenever anything happens in your life, you will know who, who, who is responsible. Sickness is not of God. So when you understand, so if Job had understood these three personalities, you would have rebuked the devil because we have not been given the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, sound mind, and love. So there was never a time that God and Satan sat down to discuss about Job. Like I say, stay in context. That word, Lord, referred to deity, referred to God, referred to men, it referred to judges. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody that has been watching. I thank you that their eyes of understanding have been enlightened. And I declare and I decree, Lord, by reason of us knowing these three personalities, whatever that was not working in them, now they know. The personality that is responsible. Any spirit of sickness, I rebuke it because Jesus was anointed. And the Bible says he went about doing good, healing all kinds of diseases. Any form of spirit, any form of sickness in your body, I declare and I decree divine healing let there be a manifestation in the mighty name of jesus you are blessed you are not cursed your eyes of understanding have been enlightened your eyes are flooded with so much light in the name of jesus have a glorious week knowing that christ in you the hope of glory you carry the presence of god you are god's sheep and my sheep they hear my voice my beloved i am grateful to god for your lives because of what God is doing in this season. Your eyes of understanding being enlightened. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed. You are not cursed. You are above. You are not beneath. In this week, may there be a manifestation. May there be manifestations. May there be manifestations in every area of your endeavors. In the name of Jesus. Whether it is in your finances. Whether it is in your health. Whether it is in your business. Whether it is in your marriage. I declare and I decree. Let there be a manifestation. In the name of Jesus. Your eyes of understanding be enlightened. May you grow in grace. May you grow in the knowledge of him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have a blessed and glorious day, my beloved, from me to you. Shalom. Love you so dearly. Ratoski bahantayabaha.